don't want to freak anyone out, but what is that in front of us? HMS Duncan is a billion pound warship. On a brand new mission. You're closing my position, clarify your intentions. You've seen the news, you know what's going on. Britain is sending a second warship to the Gulf as tensions rise. This is what we're here for. This Royal Navy destroyer is packed with the most advanced weaponry in the world. Our Sea Viper missile system is secret. By the time they're 50 feet above the ground, they're going three, four times the speed of sound. But 260 men and women also call it home. I'm like a married couple, but with no benefits whatsoever. Hopefully in the summer I'll come back. I love you. With exclusive access, our cameras have been invited back for Duncan's dramatic new seven-month deployment. Something's about to happen. It is a bit of a tense time. Illuminate, contact at 390. It is scary. As the crew joined the fight to eradicate ISIS in Iraq and Syria. This is as close as you get to being on the front line. Get ready for the worst scenario. Your future at the minute is not certain. And they find themselves at the heart of an international crisis. We are not here to start a war with Iraq. We might be here to finish one. This is as serious as it gets. Previously, we must be ready for anything. HMS Duncan arrived in the Gulf. Two personnel on the medium caliber anti aircraft machine gun. To keep British merchant ships safe from Iranian forces. This is British warship Delta 3 South. You are closing my position. I request to clarify your intentions. First interaction with the Iranians. First off, no one got shot. That's always a good day in the office, so well done. HMS Duncan has been off the coast of Iran for three weeks. So we can see that we've got a few things that are on there that are coming up as warnings at the moment. Yep, put that down. 19 year old trainee weapons engineer Kieran Whitty is one of the youngest on board. Just wanted to go down the engineering route. The job completely suits me in every aspect. I don't like the whole classroom learning thing. The Navy gives you the chance to work and get qualifications and learn. He's helping to fix Duncan's main radar, the most advanced of its kind in the world. Kieran's boss, Andrew Davidge, is showing him the ropes. The Davidge has been in the Navy longer than I've been alive, so he knows a lot of stuff, so you can definitely learn a lot from him, for sure. Not just the kit-wise, but just the Navy as a whole, he knows a lot about it. A whole lot of people whose jobs depend on that being the right part, eh? So we're up in the antenna, in like the golf ball looking bit itself. This is the part that we're changing the power conditioner. Before we stick it in, just do your normal checks. So just put that one down. Just gonna bury it up and see if we can see the same part. I want to go as far as I can, as quick as I can, go through the ranks and eventually switch over to officer. And with that, you get a full engineering degree from it. That's a Give it a push. Before Kieran can apply to be an officer, he'll need to prove his worth. Kieran still needs to watch what we're doing, and he's never going to learn as well unless he's doing something. He can teach me a lot that maybe in a few years' time I'll be able to pass on as well, like a book of wisdom that you can pass down. Happy yet? HMS Duncan was ordered to the Gulf after the Iranians captured a British flag tanker. Also tonight, as new images are released of the crew of the detained oil tanker in the Gulf, the British government considers its next move. The UK flag tanker was seized on the Strait of Hormuz on its way to Saudi Arabia. The Stena Impero and its crew are still being held hostage, and Iran has threatened more seizures.
Everyone, relax, please. Duncan's senior officers are meeting for an intelligence update. President Al Rouhani uh, said that starting a war with Iran would be the mother of all wars. And also China have said that they, uh, they seriously consider joining the US if it was to get any worse. Really? Just open source reports, sir. It's not fully corroborated yet. Their job is to guard British flag tankers and stop Iran from capturing them. There's an international view that what the Iranians are doing is wrong and illegal. But the point is, we've just got to deal with what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. The only counsel I'll give you all, which is exactly what you're doing, is just fight what you see. Just whatever it is, just fight what you see. The Iranians are trying to exert a sort of sense of authority of the region. But the point is that, that we don't recognise that that is acceptable. What will they do next? Good question. Set to both levers ahead. 8 0. I'm just repositioning the ship onto uh, the port bow, oh, in fact, the port beam of the tanker that we're escorting so that we're in a better position to protect her if required. Duncan's taking a British flag tanker, the Victoria Kosan, through the Strait of Hormuz along the coast of Iran. Right, dudes, so let's get in a bit closer then. If Iran make a move, the crew are ready. Under the build. Below decks, the ship's second most senior engineer, Lieutenant Megan Mackley Heath, is busy mucking in. The bench is there, but the ship underneath all the machinery. Yeah, it's filthy. Yeah, my overalls will not be white when I come out. The bottom of the ship is where grease and grime often collect. Oh my god. I'm gonna get my fat ass in. I'm trying to work out if I get in that hole whether I'll get back out again. <laughs> oh, right, that's it, I can't go any further. I couldn't do anything other than engineering. I couldn't do a nine to five desk job just sat at a computer. Megan's about to get her first taste of leadership as she shares control of the engineering department with her boss. My concern is he's twice my age. He's got so much experience. I don't know how I'm going to cope with that. Am I going to be a shouty person? Am I going to worry about who I'm sending where? But that's where all my professional training will come in. If you were a friend, you wouldn't have told me to get in that hole in the first place. <laughs> it's funny, huh? I think we're near enough done now. Just some typically unusual surface activity going on. Set both levers ahead, 6 0. Duncan is halfway through the Strait of Hormuz. I guess this is an Amarna, either. The captain has just spotted a gunboat. Right, let's start warning him then. Just be careful here, mate. You're going to have to watch him like a hawk. It's Iranian. He's turning towards us. And it's heading straight for Duncan. What's he doing there? No idea what his intention is. HMS Duncan is escorting a British tanker through the Strait of Hormuz. But an Iranian gunboat is heading in their direction. Right, let's start warning him then. Five shot blast, come on. Highly illegal and dangerous. Is that the Navy vessel? Well, this is British warship Cape 37. The crew decide to issue a warning. I'm exercising navigational freedom in an international strait. State your intentions, over. This is Tabani warship 
the Iranians respond immediately. You are ordered to keep well clear of this area. Over. So you need to increase speed a bit here, off watch. What's his range now? Attention all ships, attention all ships, attention all ships. Well clear of this area. Over. I think he's going to try and cross the bow of the tanker. Get right up there now and stop him from doing that. I think he's going to want to drive around and dick us, basically. So let's go. This is my last warning. And it is my last sound. The Iranian ship makes a sharp turn directly towards the British tanker. Still a hard turn to port. Follow him round. Just chase him, basically. Got to keep warning him, yeah? Iranian vessel on my port beam. Iranian vessel on my port beam. This is British warship Delta 37. You are closing my position. Your intentions are unclear. If you close within 500 yards, I will illuminate you with a flare. Over. Duncan has held the line. But as the Iranian gunboat retreats, it sends through a final message. I cannot read you because you're English. It's very poor. <laughs> <laughs> the Iranians claim their tactics were down to a simple misunderstanding. So the vessel that I'm trying to contact is... His English is very good. ...that's located in my territorial border. They literally came straight up the side of the traffic lane we were in which is probably the most aggressive thing we've seen them do so far. It's pretty much the most dangerous thing you can do. In this case, they decided to actually be quite aggressive and drive the ship in quite an aggressive manner. And it's the, it's the sort of the neck on these guys, you know, massive flags, brilliant English, you know, sort of, uh, I don't admire them, but you kind of, it's extraordinary. As the Iranians head back to their base, Duncan can complete her escort unhindered. Right, evening. The crew have been at sea for over six months. Executive Warrant Officer Martin Watson is trying to keep up morale. Mr. Driscoll, how are you, pal? Not too bad, what are you after? I'm here for the people, uh, basically from the captain all the way down. You've got some change. I need change tonight. Oh, good man. Good man, you can come again. A late night opening of the tuck shop is a chance to lift a few spirits. <laughs> They'll need some kind of sweet chocolate to keep them going a little bit. Right, what are we having, buddy? 210. I've only got coppers, sorry about that. There's a little bit of tiredness around today. Right. Hopefully this will carry on bringing a little bit of morale to, to the people. Mr. Summers, what are we having today? You go through a, an emotional roller coaster of a ride when you're away on the deployment. I only put these out yesterday. You start on a high, then you have a little bit of a dip. The welfare is massive on board, yeah. and it, it goes from the youngest sailor on board all the way to the captain. So have a look. So this is my star by Haribo, £1.30. When it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> Thank you. What's the first thing you're going to cook? Oh, I don't know. It's genuinely stressing me out about what my first meal is at home. I just, there's too much choice. With just three weeks to go at sea, Megan and her best friend, Pete Howell, are planning their return. What time are you due in to Plymouth? So it'd be lunchtime, actually. OK. She could potentially have two meals. Yeah. You can have a KFC on the way home. I bet you a tenner. Meg's a great person, and she's, she's become like a real good friend of mine since we deployed. We even say, you know, it's a very odd, dysfunctional relationship we've got. And in some ways, it is like being married. 
Obviously, I am already married, so yeah, she's not my real wife. I really like a ploughman's. Do you know when you have like the quarter of an apple and the fresh roll, and then cheese, ham, scotch egg? Oh, mm. I really like that. So I've known Pete just over a year now. We've got a great relationship. It's really nice. It's really nice to rely on someone. It's nice to have someone who asks you how you are in the morning, how you slept. Oh, I do need a good fry up as well. Mm, mm. I like going to a cafe for a fry up. For the sake of five pounds, you can get an enormous fry up and a coffee. But you can't sit in your pajamas. Live in Orpington. I can do literally anything in my pajamas. Finally chopping out the goal. Everyone's very excited. <laughs> HMS Duncan is leaving the Gulf after 52 days. Her mission has been a success. We've conducted nearly 30 transits, a million tons of cargo, and we'll hand over to HMS Kent. It's quite a nice ending to I don't think anyone fully believes it yet, and until we are out of Suez, I think it will still be a bit of a of a, a dream for most people, but so far we're on track. HMS Kent is taking up the baton so Duncan can go home. It's a great sense of sort of joy. That's it, we're at the end of our mission, essentially, and we can head home and start to look forward to unwinding a little bit after a fairly tense period at sea. Headgear is to be carried but not warm, unless much otherwise. It feels like 10 years ago, we were southbound to the Suez, um, eager and excited as to what the mission would be, and, and here we are, 45 days since Suez, having done the mission. One flare fired so far, and, and as it stands, no shots fired. That, I think, is success. We'll chop them off up here, then we'll do three cheers for HMS Kent. Yes, you've been here for it. Hooray, all that good shit. Everyone happy? Keeping British shipping in the Gulf safe from Iran will now be HMS Kent's job. Do you mind just shuffling on a bit just so I've got space to step left and swing my right arm up without elbowing the MEO in the ear? Three cheers for HMS Kent. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip. Hooray! Hip. Hooray! Without wanting to be a fun sponge or a boring old guy, um, it ain't over till we till we go. And even when we're going, it's still not over. And you know, there's a small matter of sort of four and a half thousand miles to get home as well. So it's no mean feat. It's the start of Duncan's long journey home. Wow, this flat's dirty. Oh, wait, it's not, because we're cleaning that every six hours. <laughs> not dirty at all. There's no let-up for the crew's daily duties. Endless, just boring, tiring. So that was a wrapper that I've just found that I've missed. All right. It's important that when I'm leaving, I'm always scanning the stuff. Because if this sort of stuff gets left on the deck, it could sink a ship if we got hit. All you're already going to be doing is progress them. Kieran Whitty's trying to develop his leadership skills. So, the next little challenge is a great egg drop. The mission is to protect the egg from cracking from 15 foot using teamwork, creativity and design. It's useful because it gives you some good pointers and also it's a bit of a laugh as well, so it's like a combined thing. <laughs> you could wrap it up as much as that and then use the paper as a parachute. If 
Right, we've got to go up there now. We've got to go, mate. Come on, that's finished anyway. There we go. Go. Go on then, one, two, three. Spoon bags. Way, that was good. Yeah, so obviously when I go on to do my uh, leading hands course next year, this will come in handy. You do four weeks and that's like main leadership and it's just pure stuff like this, so for that, yeah, I'll definitely be using that in the back pocket. This area of the world uh, has had attacks against warships in the past. Do not assume that this is a safe area to transit through. There is still a threat here. To reach home, Duncan must sail through one of the most dangerous stretches of water in the world. The Royal Navy regularly patrol off the coast of Yemen due to the threat to merchant shipping. Yemen is in the midst of a civil war. There are Houthi rebels, uh, which are backed by uh, Iranian forces. The area of the coastline that is controlled by those Houthi rebels presents a, a threat, so it's something that we need to be very cognizant of now. You know, this is serious stuff. This is not a holiday place. This is really top-level, risky warship business. Duncan is on high alert. Houthi rebels have got history of using waterborne improvised explosive devices. You know, there have been warships that have been attacked by Houthis successfully. So the threat is real. This is a real problem. In the heart of dangerous waters, one of Duncan's two propellers has failed. Oswald, Captain. Yeah, I've just been having a chat with the team down here. I feel that that port shaft not working is going to be a real problem. HMS Duncan has lost power to one of her propellers. The area of the coastline that is controlled by those Houthi rebels presents a threat. So kind of it's the worst time. When the gas turbine loses or switches off, you not only lose propulsion, we also lose power generation to all the other systems, so the ship's gone into a bit of a self-protect mode. Duncan's speed and manoeuvrability are compromised. You never know how you're going to cope in a situation like this until you're in that situation. Engineer Megan must fix the problem quickly. Hi, Tim. We're looking at here. So we've just closed that there. It is stressful. We don't want to lose something as we're going through the high threat area. Uh, you'll stay there until as long as you're told. She's discovered that the ship's machinery is overheating. So at the moment, the seawater temperature and the ambient air temperature is only increasing. The more energy we're putting through the drives, the more heat is producing, the hotter the components. The cooling system appears to be struggling. We understand that they want to go fast, we understand the threat, but that doesn't take into consideration how hot everything's going to get. And our gas was washed, wasn't it? Right, go on in. We want to check the intercooler from the problems yeah. today before yeah. we can say to you, 100% you can have that gas back. OK. The engineers have found debris in the system they hope removing it will fix the problem. So they're changing all the strainers now, because so they're hoping in cleaning the strainers it will get flow back. Duncan's propeller springs back to life and takes her out of the danger zone. Megan's quick actions helped keep the crew safe. We've just had this breakdown. We're still recovering slightly from it, but it's nice. It's a really good opportunity, and a lot of people won't get this opportunity. You've kind of got the full package with Les St. Heath. You know, the kind of bubbly charisma, but you've also got, tied in with that, a real genuine problem-solving, technically-minded, 
experienced engineer. HMS Duncan is now 2,000 miles from home. I've got everything I'm going through today. Just notes, really. Below decks, junior engineer Kieran Whitty is preparing for a career-defining test. I'm hoping that he asked me lots of things, but all on stuff that I know and I've revised. He said maybe just a little random ones that might throw me, but that's the thing, if I, you know, if I knew it all, I wouldn't need a book. What I have got is, but the book of brains. It's all written down up there. I'm going now, Scotty. He's been learning the inner workings of the ship and must now prove his knowledge. In charge of Kieran's department is weapons engineering officer Lee Packer. Right, where are we going? Uh, we're starting up 08. Then I'm going to go through 07, 06, yeah. and then free golf, the after gyro as well. Nice. Yeah. Instead of a walk, then. Kieran must give his boss an explanatory tour of some of Duncan's most high-tech machinery. So, it's really much over to you just to you know, wow me. Yeah. Yeah, got it? So, I've started up 08 Echo, which is almost the tip of the mass. We've got an ACH um, to prevent condensation. Yeah. We've got a de-icer if we're in really cold climates. And then we've also got chilled water because of how hot it runs. Any of if Kieran does well, he could win the chance to apply to become an officer. Yeah. By the Omni Combined Unit. Yeah. We've also got as well, I didn't mention, the EBDs. Yeah. So if you was up here and it was filled with smoke, you could don one of them. And that would give you, I believe, 10 minutes of 20? Less. Somewhere in between those two. Yeah. Right, okay. 15? No. No. I don't, I don't know exactly how much, but yeah, so you could don one of those. These are the feed into sector digitizer units. Are these your notes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's good though, I mean, why not? All right, okay. So reconfiguring the chilled water system remotely. You want to go officer, do you think that this level of knowledge will help you when you go through that transition? Yeah, obviously I know that it's more of an overview and it's you're looking more into the longer term as an officer. But that said, having an in-depth knowledge of equipment is important too. Awesome, really, Thank congratulations. A, a, a really good walk round. I don't normally give grades to these things, but it'll definitely be one of the best that I've seen around. So take that yeah, to, your, so, yeah. uh, to heart. Yeah, I believe it just passed, so really happy with that. Didn't have any doubts in myself, but, you know, it's good, good to hear it from his lips. Cannot wait. <laughs> After 190 days at sea, HMS Duncan is about to enter the Mediterranean and begin the final leg of her journey home. The team are in good spirits, still smiling. <laughs> Which is good. Someone's in the med. Slowly getting there, slowly getting there. Shiro 99, Shiro. Everything should start to get a bit relaxed, I think. Everyone should get a bit happy. There's a lot of excitement because we're going home and everyone keeps looking out the window and going, is that the med yet? Is that the med yet? Everyone's sort of counting down the last hour or so until we're officially in the med. One step closer. That direction is the Mediterranean and Greece and home, and in that direction is the Suez Canal, which we've just left, and that is the end of all of that. Home, not home. We should have been home in time for my birthday. Duncan's long deployment means Megan spending her birthday at sea. It is harder because I wasn't meant to be on board. While she's up there and distracted, I thought I'd, um, I'll decorate her monitor with my desktop party pack. Um, just a little surprise for her. Um, it's little things like that that keep us going. Gives us an ideal opportunity to make an absolute mess of a cabin. I don't know what those bits are. There's no instructions. So I've got to string all of these. So I reckon for about five minutes before she gets um, suspicious. Oh. I think we're done. 
It's all right. Oh my god. Oh, thank you. I'm a little emotional. I haven't slept, Pete. You know, you shouldn't do this when I'm tired. Want to sing along, see back of card? Have a very hairy day. Is that what? I didn't even think, I didn't even look at the back of the card. Oh, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> we come as a pair now, so uh, he's my deployment husband, but I wouldn't change it. I think he's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> we did a few line checks, checked the system. I'm content where we are now. Megan doesn't get any time off even though it's her birthday. Not funny, Dave Tonge. <laughs> Turn the lights off to simulate a total electrical failure. Working with Megan is 20-year-old technician James Bradbury. I used to work at a biscuit factory before I um, joined the Navy. Then when I came here, I came with no engineering knowledge, no engineering qualifications, so I had to start from scratch. I'm maintaining all the diesel engines on board. We have watch keepers, and their role will be every hour to go around the spaces to make sure that it's running correctly within the right parameters, it's not on fire or it's not going to flood. Fire, fire, fire. Fire in the forward gas turbine enclosure mark. Enclosure location marking at five at Foxtrot. Attack party you must at the scene of the incident via the forward access in EDBA. A fire's been discovered in the engine room. Okay, so listen then, so we've had a fire in the forward gas turbine. The crew need to get it under control fast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alarm priorities at the moment. Account for personnel, which you're still working on. A fire's broken out in HMS Duncan's engine room. That fire. It is getting very hot in the ship, yeah. so if we can restore vent once we're in a position to do so, that would be appreciated. Can we start vent now? Again, again, high vibration. There's a fire scene in the forward gas turbine enclosure, location marking two fox drop. Further assessments need to be made by the NAs. Well, the rest of the ship's company are reporting in that they are at their action station. That's obvious. It's a perfect condition for a fire to thrive. It's a large space and it's going to be a major loss of capability if that compartment's lost. But they're going to work then. There's an update from the scene of the fire. OK, listen then, Command Hoddle and SEC. The fire was extinguished. The incident is under control. You saw the fire? It's Bradbury, so he's on the SEC now. He's with the MAs. He appears while he's talking. Okay. So, I'm just to count for manpower in case he's been hurt in the scramble to action. OK, you all right? Yeah. So did he go down to look at the gas turbine because he got an indication of a fire? It just happened that he was at the time doing rounds. So he probably found it. It was probably early. He found it really quickly. I was running about straight away. I had to come back and get a like, breathing apparatus on and that and go back down. So there was quite a lot going on at first. How's Mr Bradbury, right? Yeah, he's fine, yeah, sir. Yeah, good. So there you've got a really junior engineer. You know, if he hadn't done the actions, he'd took, you're going to lose me 50% of the ship's propulsion capability, you're going to potentially allow a fire to spread out into the main compartment and you're potentially going to kill people. Hero. Bradbury has saved the day. Waiting to go see the captain. 19-year-old Kieran Whitty is about to find out if he's won the right to apply to become an officer. There's a way to, like, present yourself when you're with the captain, and you kind of... For me, I always feel a little bit on edge, like, what you're going to say, the way you sit, and things like that. He's making a decision on the way in which your career is going to go. 
Okay, so your request to me is to get your papers raised to go officer. And what specifically about being an officer is it that appeals to you? I think it's a mix of things between, like, obviously, personal development. So, you know, you're going up through the ranks, obviously, the qualifications you gain out of it and the experience within the job. Yeah. And obviously, that tied in with what you can give back to the Navy. Yeah. It just makes it like the perfect package for me. Yeah. He has got a desire to learn, which is always pleasing to see for me. And the way in which he approaches things, that makes me feel that he would potentially be a good leader in the future. Uh, I think the, the real thing that I've noticed about Wetty is that he's got a real breadth of perspective. It's very rare for an ET to be talking about risk and talking about yeah. the actions on and so what. And yeah. he, gets that, he gets that understanding. I think you'll do a cracking job. I'm really impressed with you as an operator. The fact that as a 19 year old, you know far more than I did at that age. <laughs> It gives me a lot of pride when you get a good guy like E.T. Witty, who's a 19-year-old bloke and wants to go on and be an officer. It, yeah, it gives me a lot of pride. Yeah, so it went really well. Everything I wanted to say, I said. Um, I think it went as smoothly as possible. But yeah, no, it went, it went really well, so really pleased. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Really pleased, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well done. Thanks. It's a good time for us to mark out those individuals who perform them particularly exceptional way. So we've got a few awards to present before the captain gives his end of term address. With their return home just around the corner, the crew have gathered for a special prize giving. Okay, so the Fireman Sam Memorial Duty Hero Award. This award is presented for due diligence and a conscientious eye when watchkeeping to E.T. James Bradbury. E.T. Bradbury's actions played a huge part in allowing the engine to be fixed and brought back online with only 36 hours. So you can all thank him that we're getting back to Pompey tomorrow on time. That fire could have started at any point and any person could have been doing that around. Just so happened that it was me. After seven months at sea, the UK is finally within sight. Is there free thought The ship is in Shibiran DC State 3, conditioned Yankee. So that's now one nautical mile to uh, run. It's been a long time, a long time since we saw Plymouth for England at all, so... It looks very English, doesn't it? It does look very English, yeah. 15. Duncan's official homecoming is still two days away, but some crew members are leaving early. It's a strange feeling. I could just go over there and get on a train and go home, but I'm not going to, because actually there's 40 hours to savour of our time together. So um, I'm going to savour every moment. For Megan and Pete, their time together on HMS Duncan is over. He lives in Plymouth, so it makes sense for him to get off in Plymouth. Half tripper. Have you said goodbye to Meg, Pete? Yes, yeah, so quick, uh, yeah, we said a quick goodbye. Bless her. It's, uh, it's not quite sinking in yet. With less than 48 hours to go, the crew are reflecting on what's been one of the most challenging deployments in Duncan's history. I was like a 17-year-old boy leaving my mum for the first time. That was it then, like, that was me becoming a man. 
driving madly around the French carrier, trying to stay out of her way and also not driving to the Russians. That was quite entertaining. When you live and breathe Navy for seven months solid, you do become like a big family. I've enjoyed working with the people here, striving to be better all the time. The ship's company should be very proud of themselves, and I think they probably are proud of themselves. I remember the clear lower deck for the captain telling us we were going off to the Gulf. It's coming out! Pull! Time to steal ourselves a little bit, yeah, because the timings that you expect for the next couple of months are going to change. There was a chance we were going to get hit and thinking, I've never been put in that situation, how am I going to react? It is definitely something that I would take forward, the things I've learned on here, because I think we've been in the most stressful situations you can realistically be in. And if you can justify being calm and collected in those situations, then there's not really much that you can be phased by. We knew we were there for a reason, there's a genuine reason. So it's good to be doing something that's quite meaningful, and it was good to be a part of that. Finally, over 200 days since they set sail, HMS Duncan is home. For me, this is the dream, isn't it? You know, you're driving your own ship back into probably the most historical naval dockyard in the world at the end of a really successful operation. I can't really sort of put into words what it means in terms of personal pride for me for being a part in the story of my ship's company. I've seen people thrive, learn challenges, be challenged. This combination of events doesn't happen on every deployment, and it has happened for HMS Duncan. Getting back is nice, especially when we've had such a busy deployment as it has been. Uh, to see our family and, and friends is, is going to be great. I've got more confidence. I've learned I can handle more than I thought. I've learned that as much as I say I love being at sea, there is a time when you need to go. I need a bit of shore time now to reset. I wouldn't change it though. I've loved every minute of it. Yeah, it's brilliant, it's really nice to be home after seven months away. It's lovely to be back with my parents and it's nice to be off the ship on dry land. Let's come home. Yeah.